What is up, everybody? Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Once again, it is Monday. It's been a couple weeks. I apologize for that, but let's get into it here. Before that, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Please, while you're down there, turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. Thank you to all those who have. Also, while you're down there, in the description is my link to my library channel, which is also known as Odyssey. Get on there sooner than later. If you're already on there, congratulations. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, my only request is that you please be civil in your discourse. All right, let's get into it. Glass Node Insights, the week on chain, week 44, 2021. As Bitcoin consolidates after a recent all-time high, constructive developments in both derivatives and spot markets indicate that further upside is the most probable outcome. Following an exciting week that set a new all-time high for Bitcoin, the closing days of October have seen price pull back and consolidate with a weekly low of 58,208 and a high of 63,698. Despite the market softening from the highs and price dipping briefly below 60K, Bitcoin is still up a sweltering 40% in the month of October, motivated in part by the excitement over the launch of the ProShares Bitcoin strategy ETF called BITO. That mark uh, of a plus 40% is the highest single month of gains for BTC, for BTC since December of 2020. In fact, the total price range of October's monthly price candle, including WIPs, was 23205 larger in USD value than Bitcoin's entire price range from the beginning genesis to December of 2020. Actually, I think that's wrong. December of 2017. Oh, no, no. Yeah, December of 2020. I take that back. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Bitcoin hasn't been the only performer. Ethereum has also made new all-time high this week of 4455, 4455. Eclipsing the previous high water mark of 4,362 set on May 12th. <clears throat> profit and spending levels are muted. When new highs are made, the behavior of holders and the profit taking activity of investors can inform us about the health and sentiment of the market. SOPR, which is the spent output profit ratio, is the profitability of spent Bitcoin relative to the realized value on a daily basis. Here we ignore coins younger than one hour by employing the adjusted SOPR to filter out the day trading noise and relay transactions. Just, okay. So the current levels of spent output or spent profit taking on chain are mildly, mild considering all the, uh, the all time high that was just broken 10 days ago and resemble the activity of an early bull market. It appears that current holders are by and large unwilling to move their coins here and are waiting for higher prices. Positive ASOPR during consolidation or upwards price action is constructive as it suggests the market can absorb the sell side while maintaining price support levels. A lot of attention is paid to the long-term holders, but their high time performance counterparts, the short-term holders, can also inform us about market conditions. The standing profit level of short-term holders, STH, over time is a reliable bellwether for bull bear sentiment as STH often represents their, the marginal buyer or seller. In the chart below, values over one in the green zones indicate short-term holders are stepping in to buy when price nears their cost basis observed by a bounce off the black line. <clears throat> Sellers are finding liquidity and newer holders are holding coins at break even or in profit. Values below one in the red zone show periods where short term holders in the aggregate are holding coins at a loss. When the black line acts as an overhead resistance, it means that the short term holder group is unable to pull themselves into a state of profit. <coughs> Another pr uh, perspective of on-chain profitability is via the net unrealized profit loss metric, the NUPL, NUPL. Filtered below to include the uh, include only long-term holders, this is the total standing profit level of all entities that have been holding coins for at least 155 days. The NUPL zone between 0.5 and 0.75, meaning long-term holders are sitting on 
50 to 75% net profit has historically been a pivot spot for the market. When long-term holders test this zone and stand firm by not selling, price tends to rally higher, higher in the following weeks and months. This dynamic played out in the 2013-2014 double run bull market and also in 2017. In 2019, long-term holders failed to hold and, uh, and capitulated. Here again, in 2021, long-term holders new bull is looking for support out of this key zone. In each previous instance uh, where long-term holders uh, and UPL exited this higher zone, price was breaking the all-time high. <clears throat> Leverage long traders take losses. With the launch of the ProShares Bitcoin strategy ETF in the same week as all-time highs, activity in the futures markets has been heavy and bustling. Although the ETF exists in the traditional expiring contracts market, activity has also been volatile in perpetual swaps where the funding rate governs premium rates. A positive funding rate means that longs, betting on the price to go up, have an imbalance of leverage to their side. And those traders pay a premium to shorts for the privilege of keeping their positions open. Divergences between funding bias and price can highlight risk for traders taking the other side especially when open interest is elevated. If funding is positive and price continues to rise, then the premium is aligned with sentiment and the cost of doing business and is the cost of doing business. If the funding is positive and the price goes sideways down, leverage long traders betting against the price are uniquely vulnerable to liquidations. <clears throat> the chart below shows moments of price weakness, red arrows following rises in funding, blue arrows, and the subsequent deleveraging orange arrows that occur when uh, losing positions are closed out. At the moment, funding rates are declining alongside price, suggesting that leveraged traders are taking a more cautious approach, which is a healthier position for the market by and large. So you'll get this here like, Funding goes up, price weakens, deleverage. Funding goes up, price weakens, deleverage. Okay? You see this? Ch -ch 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 -ch. Boom, boom. <clears throat> Larger amounts of long liquidations tend to follow moments of high positive funding that are met with sideways or declining price. In turn, cascading short liquidations can occur when negative funding rates, in uh, indicating abundance of short leverage meet uh, rising price. In the chart below, the red arrows from the funding uh, rate chart above have been carried over, demonstrating the liquidation waves that follow divergences between funding and price. Of note are the 3.5 million in long liquidations that occurred hourly after the all-time high break on October 21st through 22nd. Some traders went uh, long immediately upon reaching price discovery and were quickly swatted down. Coincident with our funding rate observation above, liquidations have slowed down and in the last few days, suggesting leveraged traders are taking more care with their positions and exposure. The last futures related chart we'll peek at today is the percentage of crypto margin futures declining perpetuous, uh, precipitously since the spring of 2021 highs. Futures contracts can be collateralized in two ways, crypto or cash. Cash margin futures are placed with cash or cash equivalents like stable coins pegged to the US dollar. These tend to be more stable collateral assets than their crypto counterparts. Then there's crypto margin futures, which are placed with crypto assets like Bitcoin. In these contracts, a trader's risk is and collateral are based on the same asset, thus the same volatility. If both the position and hedge are losing value, a trader has little wiggle room for uh, before liquidation set in, compounding risk but multiplying the potential reward. Since the fervor of the spring 2021 bull run, crypto margin futures contracts have been on the decline, falling from an average of 66 to 69% down to 46% today. This means that over half, 54% of futures contracts presently are margined with cash or cash equivalents, reducing the effects of compounded vol volatility. Then we got the supply and demand, uh, supply and network dynamics, sorry, that which look bullish. The RVT ratio uh, initially presented in Glassman's own checkmate aims to compare the dollar 
value transferred on the network to its relative valuation as an on-chain to on-chain ratio. RVT offers a consistent and reliable oscillator for bull bear cycles. We look at it here as one of our recently, uh, one of our recently released community workbench charts. Lower RVT values mean transfer volume USD and thus network usage is growing relative to realized cap. The network's on-chain cost basis, this can be uh, interpreted as a bullish signal. Higher RVT values means the network transfer volume is lower in relation to Bitcoin's realized value, realized cap, suggesting that network valuation is outpacing its demand utility. This is typically a bearish signal. The RVT ratio is currently trading at a relative at relatively historic lows, which indicates that the transaction volume throughput of the network is quite high relative to the value stored in Bitcoin. This is a macro bullish signal. Supply dynamics are frequently a leading indicator of shifting hodler sentiment. As prices push to new highs, older coins come back to life, seeking exit uh, liquidity to realize profits. The spent volume age bands, SVAB, filtered below to show only spent coins older than one month have ticked up recently into bullish territory, greater than 6% of daily volume. This follows a September, uh, this follows a September which saw some of the quietest activity for the cohort in recent history, less than 2% of daily volume. <clears throat> to corroborate this increased daily spent volume of coins older than one month, we look to average spent output lifespan, ASOL. The average age of all spent outputs over time, ignoring volume, likewise to the bullish spike in SBAB we just mentioned, the ASOL has been an uptick over the last 40-day average line, which typically aligns with price volatility in either direction. When combining that observation of increased old coin activity with the muted levels of profit taking covered earlier, a bullish on-chain portrait is being painted. If Bitcoin can maintain an environment of low selling, price may find itself back into price discovery before long. Well, you heard it. I'd love to hear your opinions in the matter. Leave me a comment down below. Like I said, just kindness and compassion and when uh, use those as a filter when leaving a comment let's be civil in our discourse all make the world a place we'd like to see at least the one i'd like to see i thank you so much again down in the description follow me over on library and uh have a beautiful day love you all peace